Welcome to Inside, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Aida Cardenas, Executive Director of the Building Skills Partnership. Aida has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Aida, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So you're building skills, mm -hmm. but the most important part of this discussion is where you're building the skills, who you're working with to build skills, and what skills you're building. So let's talk about that first, because it's a very fascinating model that you have. Sure, sure. So we're born out of a labor management partnership, and we're really addressing the needs of the workforce, but primarily uh, immigrant workforce, and addressing skills at work. So we're both looking at their vocational skills and the need, but also what other skills they need to improve the quality of their of their life. So we're working primarily with janitors, and we're doing uh, training on weekends, and sometimes at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, or during their janitorial shift. So when you say that it's a, it's a labor and business partnership, describe how that emerged. How did that um, discussion unfold to create this interesting solution? Over a decade ago, we were having conversations and looking at addressing uh, the issues and quality of life of janitors. And it was a conversation through their collective bargaining agreement. So a conversation with the union, SEIU, United Service Workers West, that represents the workers. And also in conversations with employers, janitorial companies, and also client companies like building managers and building owners. And there was a conversation of what can be done beyond the, the, the issues of a collective bargaining agreement, besides you know, wages and benefits, how are we addressing really ending cycles of poverty? How are we looking at the needs of the family? And started with some pilot programs around uh, a vocational ESL program and also looking at how to support the children of service workers to access higher education. And that's, that's where we started in the conversations about 12 years ago, and since then have been able to build a variety of programs and, partner, and, and programs under the partnership. So the thing that I think is so um, incredible about this is that you have actually four parties in the discussion. You have the workers themselves, you have their unions, so the unions give them a collective voice. You turn powerlessness into a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And through the unions, you're talking now with two other parties. On the one hand, the janitorial services, who are often the subcontract holder mm -hmm. of the buildings and the facilities. And then you have the, the owners of the buildings and facilities themselves. And so together, they identify a problem that nobody can look away from. And so you're, you're now sitting at the table talking about how to not only provide a service that is of value to everyone, to all those parties, but also ensure that the people who are providing those services are not stuck. Mm -hmm. They're not stuck personally, they're not stuck financially, they're not stuck aspirationally. You're giving them a path in a way that is financially self-sustaining for all. It's a very, very sophisticated approach to a collective uh, problem-solving organization uh, but it starts with power and a voice. Absolutely, it is about bringing them to the table and them having a voice, the workers having a voice in terms of what their needs are. And at the same time, meeting industry needs. And so working with the workers on upscaling a whole industry. And as we continue to improve uh, wages and benefits, we're also improving the quality of service that they're providing. And we're creating opportunities for them to have a voice, to be seen, to be heard. And, and, and we do that by, by allowing them or creating the opportunity for them to be invested in. And I think that that's very powerful in a lot of ways because it, it really brings all of the stakeholders that you mentioned uh, to the table to take responsibility for um, for such a huge, um, you know, such a huge impact in our communities and in our in business, which is office buildings where so much work happens and so much work moves and maintaining those buildings and maintain them and maintaining them particularly in a green economy and as we're all moving to sustainability uh, the, the maintenance workers and janitors play a very key role in that process and by being part of by having a voice and being at the table they're able to also uh, help meet the needs and the goals of a 
of a building or their employers as well. And so it's really a high road partnership. It's a win-win partnership. And that's why I think we've been able in the last 10 years been able to grow into different cities and different areas throughout the state of California and get continued investment, not just from uh, more employers, over 40 different janitorial companies, from a small family business to large national and international companies, all are part of investing and setting a new standard. Um, and you know we're very proud that here in, L in Los Angeles, um, there's been a lot of leadership to sort of set that pace um, and that standard for the, for um, for other areas, and that we've been able to grow and expand. So talk about the programs that you deliver uh, to these workers and how you deliver it. So uh, we originally started with, as I mentioned, a vocational ESL program and a parent education program. So at English as a second language. English as a second language, and it's a vocational program. So it's focused on English they're going to use and interact at work. So whatever lessons they're receiving, they'll be able to implement it that same night at work um, in customer service, interacting with tenants, interacting with their supervisors, et cetera. So it has a real utility for the individual who is working, it also has a real utility for the um, for the company mm -hmm. that is receiving that service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're able to use it immediately. And, and one of the biggest impacts that we've seen from that program is uh, just the confidence it starts building right away. And it really encourages folks to continue learning. Another vocational program that we've developed, again, in partnership um, with all of the, the stakeholders and with the U.S. Green Building um, Council here in, in Los Angeles is our Green Janitor Education Program, and that's a certification. So we're adding that, that, um, you know, that, that skill and, and valuing that skill and recognizing it through a certification in terms of their role um, in, in a green building. And they, the, the vocational ESL and the green program both happen at the work site and on pay time. So it's again an, a continued investment that the buildings are making both through, the, through their employer and through the client, which is uh, the property manager. And the, the, the green education is also very important in that you're creating an empowered workforce to, that is aligned to the sensibility, uh, particularly here in California, but is that is spreading throughout the nation and throughout the world mm -hmm. about uh, the chemicals that are used uh, the substances that are used, the safety that must be uh, provided in the use of, of sometimes hazardous uh, products. Um, and, and we're actually changing the world by empowering people with a voice and with knowledge. Uh, so you're actually um, not only delivering a better service and ending up with more satisfied customers, but you're also creating the change that we all talk about every day. Right. This is a small thing. We talk right. about global warming, we talk about pollution, we talk about environmental uh, health and so on. And this is an actual program that, that has a material daily effect. Absolutely, and so we go in the program. We go through green cleaning, and also go through um, waste diversion, water, uh, water, water, usage. water usage, energy efficiency, because the work that they do really translate. They're really the implementers of a lot of systems in a leveraged. building. Absolutely, and in many buildings, you see, you walk into a building and it's LEED certified, you know, platinum, gold, silver, and oftentimes workers, you know, before our program, don't realize how important they are in that process, that that seal is part of the work that they do and that they deliver it's and they deserve just, recognition. It's not just the passive systems mm -hmm. and the passive design, it's the active utilization of those design features. And, and if you bring a toxic chemical into a LEED certified building, it'll still have that negative environmental yeah. impact. So, yeah. so that education is so important yeah. in creating that change that we want. Absolutely. So those are some of our vocational programs. And in, in learning with the workers and designing, we really sort of developed the programs organically based on what workers needed. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we've also included citizenship classes, uh, computer literacy, now incorporating digital literacy into all of our programs. We have a health and wellness prevention program that we do during lunchtime, and we also have health fairs and hiking activities for families on the weekends to show uh, folks that things could be could be fun and healthy. And um, our fi we also do financial capabilities, so help support their budgeting and planning and understanding credit. And some of the 
sort of basic skills and life skills that we all need um, that, that really connect to, uh, to, to just having a better quality of life. And so we've been, uh, many of our programs have been uh, at the work site on lunchtime, or like I mentioned, um, at, you know, at the beginning of their shift, or at our offices, or at the union offices, and we're able to sometimes even at some of the employers, some of the companies, you know, open up their their space um, to do some of our training, so that we can reach as many as many you know families and as workers as possible. So we've made, we have about uh, ten different programs right now running throughout uh, the state and here um, here in Los Angeles. Very often when we talk about union and management uh, issues, we're talking about conflict. Mm -hmm. That is not necessarily the case in this situation. In this situation, there might be conflict, there might be different views, but there's also the organizing principles. How can you get people together and talk about this very big topic? And you need to have some sort of organizing entity to actually do that, to even have the discussion. And uh, SEIU played that role in this case it wasn't necessarily the case that the uh, employers were resistant, but they needed a counterpart to talk with. And that was what SEIU provided, and you have out of that emerged this type of program. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, it is not a program that is completely dependent on this funding source. It's a 40% cut of, a, of an over $4 million budget. So you're actually operating uh, with diversified sources of mm -hmm. income and engaging other foundations, uh, philanthropic donors, but also businesses that have more and perhaps mm -hmm. can give more. Yeah, and that's why when we set up our board uh, structure, we have the community um, as uh, the community serves as our board chair, and the community has a seat at the board, at the seat at the table, to ensure that this wasn't to deal with labor management issues. That there's other processes for that. The, the, this is to really meet the mission, and the mission of BSP is to improve the quality of life of property service workers and their families. So, although it is uh, targeting this particular industry and this particular workforce, and there's investment, there's there's, there's a mission, and that's what we're called upon. And so, you know, regardless of what side folks are coming from, our work is to work towards that mission. And, and you're right, a lot of times, like, well, how, you know, how are they gonna be, you know, in the room when they're dueling, or it's a bargaining, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a contract year, so they're gonna be negotiating, you know, they're gonna be at the opposite and, of the and table. The other the board table. members include people from the companies and from the union and from other other entities. Correct, right? so it's a third representation from the industry, from management, a third in, uh, representation from the worker voice in the union, and a third um, from the community to help balance us, you know, all out. An organization that strengthens community, that strengthens a workforce, that strengthens service levels to uh, businesses, and strengthens uh, uh, civil society. Aida Cardenas, thank you so much for describing the work of the Building Skills Partnership, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, thank you so much.